My name is Ruggero Maria Santilli. I am the president of the Institute for Basic Research in Florida. We are here at uh, Moroso International Racetrack to prove that the new fuel produced and known as under the name of Magna Gas can indeed be uh, used successfully in a race car, such as, or at least in a sports car, such as this magnificent Ferrari 308 GTSI 1980 with mechanics by Ferrari and the body by Pininfarina in uh, Grugliasco, Torino, Italy. I indeed, uh, during several track sessions, we have proved that this Ferrari behave in exactly the same way as any other 308 of the, with the same power but with a few differences however the first difference being that this car has no uh, catalytic converter yet the exhaust surpass all EPA requirements as they stand now so therefore this car proves that uh, that racing can, in, uh, can indeed be done with an environmentally acceptable uh, fuel Moreover, this fuel can be produced anywhere with uh, reactors called hadronic reactors. And those reactors for the recycling of liquid waste can be anywhere, including in this racetrack. So this uh, green fuel can be produced anywhere desired and in any amount desired. It is important uh, to compare magna gas in a race car versus uh, ordinary gasoline. Well, first of all, performance is absolutely equivalent or superior for magna gas because we can increase the BTU and the energy content of magna gas up to any level desired. So performance is definitely better also because magna gas has 150 octanes and therefore it's much smoother on engine as compared to gasoline. Race gasoline has 110 octanes. So we have 40 more octanes than gasoline. Moreover, 50% of the exhaust of magna gas is composed of water vapor, which as such cools the, the exhaust system. So in view of the higher octane and the cooling effect of the exhaust, we can pump more energy into the same engine and therefore extract more power. Also, the higher octane allows us to reach higher RPM, red line, more than an ordinary gasoline operation. Secondly, there is the advantage in weight. Um, gasoline is uh, quite heavy. Magna gas is a gas, and therefore is um, talking about a reduction from 50 to 70 pounds in rain setting condition. Finally, at last but not least, magna gas is dramatically safer than gasoline. Again, because um, gasoline spills and then explodes, particularly during refueling. That is the biggest risk in refueling during a race. Magna gas uh, instead is lighter than air, evaporates. Uh, instantly in, uh, in the atmosphere, refueling with magna gas is instantaneous and finally magna gas burns fast but does not, uh, uh, does not explode. So in conclusion, we do believe that magna gas is the ideal uh, fuel for racing and we do hope that the automotive racing industry will take seriously this initiative because this is the first and only sports car running on an environmentally acceptable fuel. This Ferrari establishes beyond any doubt that racing can indeed be done with a fuel fully acceptable by, the, by our environment. So therefore, we do hope that the racing industry will respond and use um, on a comparative basis magna gas in racing was as the normal in an ordinary race cars as in, in lieu of uh, gasoline or jointly with gasoline so that the uh, racer can see for themselves the advantage of racing in money gas as compared to racing with uh, gasoline. I can assure you the moment they see the higher red line, a lighter car, faster refueling, there will be no doubt any, any sensible racer will use money gas. Uh, what we've got here is a uh, 1980 308 GTI it came from the factory with mechanical Bosch fuel injection. We removed the Bosch fuel injection system. We installed electric fuel injectors and made a plumbing system with a regulator. We have tanks here. We have tanks in the front of the car uh, to contain the magna gas. We uh, put a high performance ignition system on the car to uh, enhance the combustion and we control the regulators with an Excel digital sequential fuel injection computer 
which we can tap into with a laptop and make changes in the fuel maps and uh, acceleration curves and all the parameters to make the engine run. Uh, we tried to do this job with a minimum amount of uh, modifications. Uh, it, it did not run very good when we got the car. It, it had a very old fuel injection system on it that uh, had not been properly serviced. And uh, since we've done this to it and been working on it, the engine is cleaned up, cleaned out, and is, is really running very nice. And uh, it's actually cleaned the inside of the engine out, uh, putting out almost no hydrocarbons anymore. I'm a Gene West, uh, mechanic for Dr. Santelli on this uh, MagnaGas program. This is the uh, computer we've installed for the digital fuel injection. It uh, controls the perimeters on the fuel map. We can rich in uh, any level as far as RPM. Uh, we can change uh, how it reacts to uh, the vacuum in the manifold and several other uh, acceleration perimeters, the uh, ignition, and we can plug into the laptop right here and uh, even on course make changes uh, while the car is running down the track. It's a state-of-the-art system. This is the third prototype of a, of a total recycler. It is currently operating on uh, recycling antifreeze waste from an automotive uh, um, service station. Uh, this is the reactor itself. This is the power unit. It's a Miller welder. Those are the um, electronic control for the arc. The, uh, and, and this is essentially the remote control for the activation on and off of the operation. The magna gas is produced inside the reactor and then it bubbles to the surface of the liquid and it goes through this chamber where it, through a hose it then send out for collection. The reactor has two sources of usable energy. In addition to the um, production of magna gas, the liquid waste acquires a considerable heat which in this particular case is dissipated by in those radiators and in other model instead is utilized via um, uh, heat exchanger. This is the fourth prototype of a total recycler. It's more powerful than preceding, uh, the preceding ones. It is also completely automatic with uh, remote control for the activation and the disconnection of the equipment. It is again uh, composed by a reactor itself, a power uh, unit, which is a Miller uh, welder with electronic controls for the, um, for the electric arc. And um, the reactor produces, again, two forms of energy, a combustible gas, which is called, uh, produced in this um, chamber, and heat, which is dissipated in, uh, in that radiator. This reactor, in addition, has a, has a control panel for the, um, that monitors all, uh, all the operations, from, um, including uh, emergency shutoff uh, for safety. This reactor um, um, is about 50 kilowatts. It produces about 600 uh, cubic feet of magna gas per hour, plus about half a million of BTU of uh, heat per hour. To have an idea of what type of production we are referring to, in, uh, in one hour and a half, this reactor essentially can fill up a car for the duration of, uh, for a driving distance of in the range of three to four hours. This is our development model number seven. It is uh, now currently in production. We have our reactor, our control panel with a touch screen, automatic controls or manual if you want to do the maintenance operations at the time. Uh, over to the right, we have our heat exchanger and our cooling pump. We also have a very important plasma arc flow pump, which shoots liquid right through the arc. The magnet gas is produced in this reactor and as it goes up, bubbles up through the gas tower over to the auxiliary frame through the filter into the bellows. As the bellows creeps up uh, and fills up, pressure will cycle on and pump it to a larger storage tank, which uh, we have right outside. And as soon as it comes down, it will automatically shut off uh, until it inflates again. On our control panel here, for automatic operation, Set it to auto, you hit the start button, you have to double check, it's a safety uh, mechanism, so that once we uh, 
more precisely focus on our stop. Shows you the volts, current, total kilowatts being consumed at the arc. Automatically the plasma arc flow pump, which is crucial to the process, is initiated. Our coolant pump is initiated. Our compressor will kick on when it cycles. When a uh, heat exchanger fan will kick on at about 150 degrees, which is optimum operating temperature. On the bottom here, for our manual controls, if we switch to hand, we turn on the plasma arc flow if we're doing just testing. If we're ready for cooling, we can turn on the coolant pump and the fan. As the bellows is increased and inflated, when it reaches near the top, we can turn the compressor on to deflate it, making sure to stop it when it gets to the bottom, not create a negative pressure inside the reactor. All of this is actually automated into the program when you want to run it for production purposes. The manual controls are more, more or less for maintenance purposes, testing, things of that sort. Any problems or anything, when you're ready to stop production, you just hit stop arc. And as you can see, the volts come down to zero, no amps, and we're good to go. As you can see, it's a very clean burning blue flame. Nothing but water vapor. There's no soot to the flame as in most fuel gases. As you can see, the cutting, cutting kerf is almost vertical. The heat affected zone is very, very narrow and very little slag, which shows the heat density of the, of the flame itself. This gas has a natural odor of its own. So it doesn't need to have the safety scent added to it like other fuel gases. And on this latex balloon, you can, you can smell it coming through. The, the gas is also lighter than air, which is a safety feature in, in itself that if there was a leak, instead of pooling on the floor like other fuel gases, it will rise up and to a safe distance. This is a Honda Civic built in 1998 to operate in compressed natural gas and has been converted to operate in, in, uh, on Magna gas. The conversion is, has been essentially very simple and, um, and uh, consisting in the removal of the natural gas and its replacement with, uh, with Magna gas. As, as you can see, there is no difference whatsoever in, uh, in performance between gasoline and, and magna gas or between um, natural gas and magna gas so therefore the new fuel is indeed compatible with existing fuel both liquid and uh, gases the, uh, the the primary advantage of uh, magna gas is, is the surpassing of its exhaust by the most stringent epa requirements without a catalytic converter Another advantage of, um, of uh, magna gas operated automobile is that uh, fuel can be produced anywhere desired and of course it is produced in the USA, it's 100% um, US fuel produced actually in Florida. The, um, this is due to the fact that the reactors, as we have seen uh, before, are um, relatively small, uh, the size essentially of the size of a, uh, of a desk, and as such can, they can be placed everywhere. In particular, the, uh, the um, Adroni reactors for the production of magna gas 
can turn a current um, fuel distributors, such as gasoline distributors, into um, fuel producers. They can produce uh, them, their own fuel um, as, uh, as per, uh, as per the specific uh, request or uh, demand. And this fuel is produced by the recycling um, liquid waste, such as automotive um, antifreeze and oil waste and any other type of, um, of non-radioactive liquid waste. Another interesting aspect, which is perhaps of primary relevance, is that uh, when produced in, um, in sufficiently large volume, Magna gas is indeed competitive with respect to, um, to gasoline, as well as with respect to, uh, to natural gas. As you may know, the cost of natural gas in certain areas of America has been increased 300 times, so the cost of those uh, fossil fuels are essentially skyrocketing. The, um, the, this car can be driven in any, in any condition, and as I indicated before, uh, all uh, all tests uh, have proved the, the complete equivalence of Magna gas with respect to both gasoline and natural gas. Therefore, any performance that you have with those, those fuels can be equally obtained, if not surpassed, by Magna gas. This implies a um, comparative acceleration, a, a speed which are um, very compa comparable, and um, actually the, the um, the, 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 the same performance can be achieved with a lesser engine temperature, as you can see even in um, currently, if this is driven on, on, a, on gasoline, the temperature will be at least one third higher than what it is now. The tune-up is essentially uh, identical to the, um, to the gasoline, ignition is the same, however, the, the, um, since the Magna Gas is a gaseous fuel, it is naturally set for combustion. Na See, um, gasoline is liquid and has to be atomized by the combustion before it can burn um, in, in an engine. Now, Magna gas is gas. Gaseous fuel are um, better than liquid fuel on thermodyna thermodynamical grounds and efficiency grounds. So the, so the servicing is, uh, is less. The comparative mileages between um, gasoline and Magna gas is is the following, it's essentially based on what is called um, the gasoline gallon equivalent, which is 121 cubic feet of magna gas measured at atmospheric pressure corresponds to one gallon of, uh, of gasoline. As with all cars that run on a gaseous fuel, you have to pump the gas in with a compressor. With the safety nozzle on, we start the compressor. We pump the fuel into the car. It takes about 15 minutes doing it in, in this process. Now, as you can see behind the car, we have high pressure bottles where we can just download from high pressure bottles into the car. That's all there is to it. Uh, we got this car straight from Honda and it was dedicated for natural gas. We put Magna Gas into the car and started it up. It ran fairly well. We changed the timing a little bit and uh, added a nice high voltage MSD ignition system to uh, boost up the spark and get better combustion out of the engine. And uh, we've actually removed the catalytic converters on the car so that uh, we can check the emissions straight from the engine, which are way below a normal automobile's emissions, way below. Uh, we added a pressure gauge so we would know how much pressure was in the uh, in the tanks of the car and we added a gauge to monitor the pressure for uh, the fuel rail so we would know what we were dealing with for research and so forth and so on. And other than that, the, the automobile is pretty much straight from Honda just like this. <laughs> The engine of the car runs very smoothly, it performs very well, it has as much get up and go as the car did on natural gas, sometimes a little bit more. It seems a little peppier on the magna gas than it did on the natural gas. the normal background readings of the air, the hydrocarbon will jump between 1, 2, and 0 because it picks up hydrocarbons out of the air 
from cars driving down the street. This is our oxygen level. That's the amount, percentage of oxygen in the air that we're breathing right now. CO2, there's a small amount of CO2 in the air and a small amount of CO. We're sitting here running and we'll put the emission analyzer into the tailpipe and then we'll see what kind of readings we get on the machine over here. Okay, now if you'll notice, the uh, hydrocarbon is reading one, two, three, depending on, you know, sometimes it'll even go into the minus column, which means it's actually cleaning the air that goes through the engine. Our oxygen is all the way up to 14.6, 14.7, which is way higher than any normal uh, automobile would run. The CO is only 4.2, which is very low, uh, uh, the CO2, and the CO is only 0 0.05, which is also very low. Uh, we haven't done any experimentation for this, but you, I, I don't think you could kill yourself with that emissions. Which is another safety issue for forklifts and machines running inside buildings, things like that. You can run an internal combustion engine inside of a building and not poison all your customers. The um, research that eventually led uh, to the um, development of the Magna Gas technology was initiated uh, at Harvard University in 1978 under um, contract with U.S. Department of Energy. My contract was specifically intended for the development of all the necessary um, basic research which will um, subsequently permit the development and industrial production of new clean energies and fuels as needed for the American independence from foreign uh, oil suppliers, as well as for the resolution of the alarming uh, environmental uh, problems. Uh, the, one of the most uh, important uh, aspects of the Magna Gas technology is that this new fuel called Magna Gas does indeed achieve a resolution of all uh, these environmental problems because Magna Gas exhaust contain no carcinogenic or other toxic substances. The, um, the carbon dioxide content is about 50% that of gasoline and about uh, uh, um, and, uh, only 30% that of natural gas with further reduction of CO2 permitted by, by uh, disposable cartridges in the, uh, in the exhaust system. And finally, the um, uh, Magna Gas exhaust contain about 12 to 15 percent oxygen. Namely, we have a fuel um, uh, such that its exhaust can sustain life. I repeat, uh, Magna Gas exhaust, rather than being uh, toxic, can actually sustain life because of the high content in oxygen and the lack of uh, toxic uh, substances. My primary duty under my contract with the Department of Energy was that of constructing, or at least initiating the construction of a broadening or a generalization of quantum mechanics under the name of hydronic mechanics, namely a new mechanics based on, on um, the following um, new, more general dynamical equations. Here is a generalization of Heisenberg equation and near the generalization of um, the Schrodinger equation, the, uh, which will permit the, uh, the new advances in energy and fuel. The, the main difference between um, quantum and hadronic mechanics is that quantum mechanics can only represent action at a distance interactions derivable from a potential as existing in the atomic structure. Hadronic mechanics can uh, represent uh, additionally also uh, uh, interaction of contact type when the um, constituents are physically in, um, in contact with each other as schematically represented here in this, um, in this view of two electrons penetrating one inside the other so with, a, with an area of overlap. This area of overlap cannot be represented with a potential, therefore, therefore it is outside the technical capability of quantum mechanics. The primary difference um, between, uh, another primary difference between quantum and hadronic mechanics is that the latter um, the theory is based on new mathematics. In fact, there cannot be uh, a really new physical theory without, without first working out new mathematics. 
And in particular, there cannot be new mathematics without new numbers. In fact, at, the, at Harvard, I was a member of the Department of Mathematics as a physicist. And I was not a member of the Department of Physics, precisely because of the primary need of working out this new mathematics, which I did. Um, and it is based on a broadening of the uh, very simple unit, uh, basic unit of quantum mechanics, which is the number one dating back since the biblical times. And uh, this simple unit has been um, generalized to an arbitrary value or even an integral differential operator as expressed in, um, by this expression here. So in hadronic mechanics, the unit can be an, an arbitrary matrix or, um, or, uh, or integral differential expression. Hadronic mechanics reached uh, uh, reach maturity for industrial application in 1996, it took about, about two decades of, the, of studies by a, a, a considerable number of mathematicians, theoreticians, and experimentalists. And this effort resulted in over 10,000 pages of published research in various uh, journals and, uh, and monographs and conference proceedings, some of which are here on, on this table, only a small representative example. Uh, in, uh, by 19, in, in 1997, hadronic mechanics had been used to successfully achieve a broadening of quantum superconductivity called hadronic superconductivity. The latter one permitting, permitting quantitative studies of a new concept of current that based on electron pairs, technically called um, Cooper pairs, rather than individual electrons, exactly as per the picture um, we indicated above, which represents a pair of uh, couple electrons, which is impossible for quantum mechanics due to repulsion of the, the, of the, of the Coulomb force, since the electrons have the same charge, while um, the, the, that, that, that coupling is indeed permitted by, uh, by the broader hadronic uh, mechanics. Finally, by 1998, hadronic mechanics um, had produced a, a broadening of quantum chemistry into a new discipline called hadronic chemistry. This new chemistry has been really fundamental for quantitative scientific studies of the new technology of money gas due to the truly large deviations of this technology from the prediction of quantum chemistry, such as an energy content more than three times the prediction of quantum chemistry. Um, and an energy um, efficiency which is almost, uh, uh, almost 10 times the efficiency predicted by quantum chemistry and many other large deviations. This, those quantitative scientific studies have been possible because um, hadronic chemistry uh, has introduced a new concept of molecular structure which is um, based on the actual bond of valence electrons as depicted in this picture here for the hydrogen molecules, in which the two electrons are um, schematically represented as uh, coupled, and therefore producing an actual attractive force among the molecule, which is fundamentally absent in, um, in the molecular models predicted by quantum uh, chemistry. In turn, this new, um, new chemistry and, the new, and its new model of molecular structure have uh, permitted the achievement for the first time in scientific history of a representation of all molecular characteristics which are exact to the seventh digit without any adulteration of the basic, uh, basic principle. As indicated earlier, the, uh, the um, hadronic mechanics, hadronic superconductivity, and hadronic chemistry have been specifically constructed for the um, industrial production of new clean energies and fuels. This objective has been uh, achieved by the conception, the design, and construction of new reactors, which are called hadronic reactors, to, uh, to stress the, the fact that they are not predicted by quantum theory. Nevertheless, they, can, uh, they are instead predicted and, um, and then can be quantitatively treated via the broader hadronic uh, theories. The first, um, the first prototype of the hadronic reactor was built in 1998. It was manually operated 
followed by several other reactors, the seventh generation of which is today in, in production and sale. The, um, there are several types of hydronic reactors depending on the, on the, on the target ob objective. The first hadronic reactor called total recyclers completely eliminate from our planet undesired liquid waste such as antifreeze and oil waste, um, cooking oil and any other type of non-radioactive liquid waste. Such liquid waste are then transformed into um, a clean burning combustible gas plus heat in a usable form via a exchanger. The second type of um, hadronic reactor is called linear reactors. They have been constructed, um, developed, and now are in their final stage of, um, of finalization to, uh, to recycle liquid su uh, sewage as, a re as um, released by town um, uh, uh, municipalities or farms. And such sewage, uh, liquid sewage is uh, turned into um, a clean burning combustible gas plus uh, water suitable, uh, excellent for irrigation and, uh, and fertilizers. A third type of hydronic reactor, which is now currently the initial stage of the um, uh, development, is conceived for the specific purpose of producing uh, heat in a, in, a, in a clean, environmentally accept acceptable form, suitable for the production of um, electricity and in replacement of the, the current electric power plant, which are highly polluting when powered by fossil fuel of, or nuclear uh, reactors.